Welcome to the Academy of Esports Podcast. I am your host, James O'Hagan, and this week I get the absolute pleasure to be joined by one of my co 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 hosts for the Esports EDU chat. It is Ms. Angelique Giannis. Angelique, thank you for being a guest in the Academy of Esports Podcast today. Thanks for having me. I feel like it's a long time coming. Everybody seems to say that. <laughs> not, people, I look, I only do one show a week and that's all I get. And I don't do like multiples or anything. And, and again, they get to see us as we cut it up on Thursday nights of people. I know, exactly. right? That's what I mean. I'm like, we chat every week. So I don't know why I haven't been on. I mean, it's my fault, but. It's n- no, it's not your fault. <laughs> so let's let's get into this right around esports and education. You have a very unique uh, situation, unique perspective. You've taken a, a, a unique path in it. First of all, you're an English teacher at Helix Charter High School in San Diego, California. Um, you also are the esports one of the esports coaches for your school. You also were were a NASEF Scholastic Fellow, and now you're a NASEF Scholastic mentor is that all correct so far yes it's correct now let, now this is something i this is a question i haven't asked anybody but it's funny one of our co 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 hosts <laughs> you know i interviewed danielle johnson uh some while ago and it, it was like i think we did it in the middle of summer when we mm. did the interview and she said oh my gosh i sound so naive is there something like you look at right now, maybe in your journey as you've gone through all of this with esports, and you're like, gosh, I can't believe like I actually thought this back then versus where you're at now today. Maybe like what's or maybe it's a bigger <laughs> surprise than you thought you could ever realize. I mean, I think I think like back then when I started, I I thought that it would just be, I felt super alone. I guess that's like how I can explain it. Like I thought that I was the only person doing this like innovative, cool thing, but like, I feel like nobody, we weren't, it it wasn't very, not publicized, but like, I don't also don't want to say cool, but like it wasn't cool yet to do. (laughs) So like, I look back at when I started and I thought like, oh, I'm just going to be playing video games with students. And, you know, hopefully I can, I can bring my love for video games to them and have it be a little bit more organized. Um, and then I found NASEF and then I found all of you guys and we all connected and it's just become this thing that I never could have imagined from when I started. Like I never thought that I could bring video games into my classroom. Like that never crossed my mind when I started my club. And now it's like, a big part of my classroom is becoming more and more integrated into my curriculum every single semester. And that's like, I don't know. I, if someone told me that a year ago, I would have been like, yeah, right. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, where did your love for video games come from? Um, I mean, I've played video games my whole life. Like I had an NES growing up and um, that this is actually something I've never shared with you guys. So interesting, interesting story. Um, I grew up really Poor. I grew up in a really, really uh, rough household without parental guidance um, and lots of role models. And I, I really, I, I grew up in a place where I wanted to escape, basically. And video games became that place for me. Um, hmm. And that's kind of how I started my love for gaming. Is it just it gave me a, a story to kind of you know check out of what was going on in real life for a while. And um, it it just became something that I loved and I played video games all growing up. Um, and I got an N64. I remember the day I got an N64. It was so exciting. <laughs> Spent like half my life on Ocarina of Time. And then I feel like I stopped kind of playing video games in middle school and high school. Cause it was not cool, you know, like as a girl gamer, and I definitely think that's shifting now for sure. But as a, a, a woman who plays games, like, people would make fun of you. So Mm -hmm. I kind of missed the bandwagon in high school. I also didn't have a PlayStation or an Xbox. I couldn't afford it. So I kind of missed all that fun. Um, But then when I graduated high school and got into college, I picked Halo up and was like, oh my God, I like forgot how much I love video games. And then, yeah, I mean, it was just the love for playing video games, playing with my friends, um, the storylines and all of that. It's funny you say that you, you know, it, it, it's, 
for those of us who grew up, well, you're younger than I am, obviously, but I mean, even me growing up in the 80s, as a child of the 80s, we shall say, you know, we didn't see girls in the arcade. No. And it, what's funny about the, a parallel I hear with your story is, uh, you know, you said, well, it wasn't acceptable. It wasn't normal for girls to play video games when you're growing up. Arabian Prince, who's a rapper for, was an NW, was a member of NWA said, you know, he also was a gamer growing up in Southern California and it wasn't cool. It wasn't gangster to be playing yeah. video games. And, you know, yeah. he had to, he had to push that down even, you know, he had to bury that side of his interests in life too, to, to live up to this, you know, well, you, you know, if you're going to be a, a rapper, you know, that's, that's not video game culture. And of course now what we're seeing is hip hop and, and, and gaming culture are really starting to merge together. There's a lot of, of interesting similarities. And now again, we're seeing education and esports and gaming come together. And you've really done some really, I think, just fun things this year, especially with COVID and and having to just take these skills that maybe you picked up from the gaming club. What's what's one of the things that you've done this year that is incorporating gaming into your classroom? Because you talked about, you know, being able to bring that in. What's one of the things you've done this year to do that? I mean, I think my favorite, oh, I have two. I have two. I can't yeah, like let's one. get to it. We okay. got time. Okay, okay. I think one of the things that I definitely think is what most people know and have seen me for is bringing Among Us into my classroom, and that was that just she was kind the of first. She was the first. I, I don't know if I was the first, but um, it just came out of necessity, you know. Like in the fall, I felt like all of us were kind of beaten down by distance learning. Um, it obviously did not go well in the spring. We were all thrown into it. And I am so thankful that I am a techie person because I was already utilizing a lot of these ed tech tools um, prior to COVID and prior to being in lockdown. Mm -hmm. But in the fall, I felt like for all of, probably I could speak to all students when I say like, we went to distance learning in the spring thinking it's only going to be a little bit. It's only going to be this long. And then having that extended into the fall, I felt like was such a shot to the heart for a lot of kids. Um, and the motivation and the the drive just wasn't there. It was so hard. And for me, myself too, it's like, I'm talking to black screens. None of my kids' cameras can be on because their internet doesn't work correctly or they just don't feel comfortable having it on and there was just like no connection no conversation which is something that I crave mm -hmm. um and then among us kind of fell into my lap we were, I was playing it uh, with my students in my gaming club one day and they're like let's play this new game and I was like oh my god like all of us are talking we're all like debating and I was like holy cow, like I'm teaching claim evidence analysis in my class right now. I'm teaching kids like how to formulate an argument and then how to find evidence to support that argument and counterclaims and all of that, which when you're saying that is like so boring, like trying to teach kids <laughs> that with the definition, they're like, all right, whatever. Or like trying to teach kids that with just an article you found online, no matter how interesting that article is. I don't care if the article is about video games. It's it's not as fun. And then I realized like I'm listening to all of them talk in my gaming club and I'm like, Oh my God, they're doing, they're doing this. They're, they're making a claim, they're backing it up with evidence and then they're analyzing it to um, prove like why it's correct. And so I was like, I got to do this in my class. And um, I finagled with the rules a little bit um, and structured it to where all the kids were talking. Cause that was, was most important that everyone's voice is heard and I told my students we were going to play Among Us and they lost their minds. And it was like, everyone's mic was unmuted. I couldn't get them to stop talking, which I'd never heard a lot of their voices before. I'd never met wow. them in person, nothing. Couldn't get them to stop talking. I couldn't get them to leave. <laughs> which, <laughs> as a teacher, you know the second that you're like, all right, guys, have a good day. It's like ding, 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 ding. And then they're all gone except for that one kid who left his computer and forgot that class was happening. <laughs> he still logged in and fell asleep at the other end. Yeah. And then at that point, I bring out my karaoke mic, but that's maybe for later. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I couldn't get them to leave. They stayed through their lunch period with me and we played. And I was like, what did I just create? So 
that was, it's just the best. It, it, it taught them claim evidence analysis, but it also got them to connect with each other. And my class was astronomically more engaged and willing to unmute their mics after that. It was a huge shift. It, it's it's amazing what happens when uh, you break ice. And and I think, you, again, I, you've pointed out in our EDU chats even, we have students who are freshmen right now who have never set foot in a high school, never done anything high school related. They're still very much in the mindset of middle schoolers, which oh, middle schoolers just, you know, you got to be a special breed of teacher to really enjoy the middle school experience, I will yeah. say. Yeah. Um, but, you know, freshmen, especially we're looking at now where they've been out since basically we'll say almost halfway through their eighth grade year. Yeah. And and you're you're trying to normalize them into high school culture and, and how mm-hmm. it is a little bit supposed to be more engaging. And and yeah, again, put yourself in the f- shoes of a 14 year old who just doesn't want to be that, you know, that nerd or that, you know, that teacher's pet or whatever. Right it's so hard to get them to take down those barriers. And it seems like, again, you've gaming is at least what I've seen through our gaming clubs and, and esports experiences. It all still comes back to community. Right? Yeah, absolutely. hundred percent. Yeah. 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 So you said that there was another, inc- another thing that you really oh, enjoyed this year. Yeah. The other thing that I did, which, I mean, we all, as teachers, right? We you know student choice is the best choice. Um, and I'll fight that till I die. I love giving my students choice um, in what they do. And last semester, I did a creative project. Um, and it was very open-ended. I told them, like, they can do whatever they want um, for this project. They can make it however they want. Could be digital, could be handmade, could be whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but it had to either... Uh, represent Fahrenheit 451, which was the book that we we read last term, or it had to represent like their definition of happiness. Um, that's, and, a pretty, that's a pretty broad spectrum. Yeah, well, we read we read um, Fahrenheit and analyzed Guy Montag, the main character, for him discovering what the true meaning of happiness is. So he like doesn't know that he he thinks he's happy at the beginning of the book. Mm-hmm. And then he kind of has this moral awakening and his, you know, the glass shatters and he realizes that his whole life's a sham, essentially. <laughs> Spoiler well, alert. And, and, well, as, and in the book, what I love is they're called firemen, but really right. they are not protecting. They are to burn books. Right, right. Yeah. So um, they kind of, they did this study on on happiness and what their true definition of happiness is. Um and so I let the students do a creative project and said, like, you just have to represent this in some way. I don't care what you do. Just show me what you've learned. And um, I have always done this free choice, but I've never explicitly said, use a video game. Like, mm-hmm. I, I have never explicitly said that. And I think that now looking back, more students would have taken this opportunity had I said that, because they just think video games are off limits, right? They just think video games are, why would you use that in school? Yeah, so, yeah, because, well, because we've perpetuated the stereotype many right. teachers have over the years that these are a waste right. of time. Right. Why haven't you done your homework? Oh, you're playing video games for this long? Like, yeah. it's definitely something that I think students assume teachers look at in a negative light. And so I told them, like, hey, here's an idea. Like, why don't you recreate some scenes from Fahrenheit? in Minecraft or in Fortnite creative. And they're like, what? Like we can do that? I'm like, absolutely. So I had, I think five or six students um, turn in uh, a project. I think a couple, like half of them were Minecraft and half of them were in Fortnite creative where they recreated Fahrenheit and recreated scenes from Fahrenheit, not having like obviously seen any of it. They just read the books. Um, and it was, it blew my mind. Um, I had them turn in a video where they're walking through their world and they're, they're narrating it and explaining the choices they made, why they made them. And it was, you know, like you, you, I know that I would not have seen that level of analysis had I had them write a paper. I know for sure I wouldn't have. I had students who said like, oh, well, I put Montag in his wife's bed 
with a wall in between it, which is not true in the book. But they said, like, I put a wall in between it because in the book it talks about how distant they are and how they don't have any connection anymore. Mm -hmm. And, and they, you know, he realizes he doesn't love her and all of this stuff. And I'm like, Oh my, like they're thinking just, it went beyond what I even expected. Um, and it, yeah, it was just the coolest, like nerdy English teacher moment. I was like, Oh my God, I'm doing this forever. But uh, Uh, yeah. It's interesting that, you know, the big, (laughs) I go back, of course, again, child of the eighties and we learned to play uh, Oregon trail and we, you know, there's a lot of like math blasters and stuff. (laughs) And and it's like, there's been these companies who've just been trying to develop these educational games. Oh, this is the silver bullet for reading. Mm -hmm. And this is a silver bullet for math and blah, blah, blah. And what I find most powerful are how students can take where their passions currently lie, the tools and the games that they love to use, like Minecraft, as you said, or, or mm-hmm. Fortnite, Fortnite Creator, and to take those and make those meaningful representations to them, which goes well beyond any educational software, if you will, mm-hmm. because, again, it is intrinsically motivating to the student. Mm-hmm. It is that universal design for learning concept of, hey, let's take this thing that, uh, I can use to express my understanding, my learning, my synthesis, right. and and put it in a form that I'm going to present to you and explain why it is that this is so important. Did all your students pick uh, one of those two modes, or did they pretty much, or was it the majority of students? Or It was, I mean, it was all, kids did all sorts of stuff. Um, you know, they handmade stuff, they made videos, they made, like, it was all over the block. I had a student do a rap, (laughs) um, like a a full on music video. Like he's walking through the streets with someone like, you know, following him. And we talk about how unmotivated our kids are right now, uh, during Mm -hmm. distance learning, right? That's what we're hearing. And I'm not saying that my class does not struggle because I am struggling. I have students who I can't find. I have students who are not turning things in. So this is definitely not me saying that it's not, it's not going great for me either. But like, we keep saying like they're unmotivated and, you know, they're not learning in Zoom school and and all of this. And it's like, well, we need to be rethinking how are we assessing them? Like, what are they doing at home right now? What are they doing when they're locked inside Um, and they can't go outside because of COVID. These kids are on these video games. These kids are finding new hobbies and trying new things. And yeah, maybe they're not going to be, you know, showing us their learning in an essay. But I guarantee that if you watched my students walk through this Fortnite or Minecraft world, like they had a deep analysis of the themes of Fahrenheit. They had the evidence. They had the claims. They had all of this thinking that probably they spent a lot more time on than they would have an essay had I assigned it. Yeah, and, and you also have taken steps, too, to have, I know, I believe Friday nights, you do have some gaming sessions for your kids as well, which, <laughs> again, it, it, you know, I think, again, the, the thing that's missed so much is the relationship building, and you're using the technologies and the platforms we have available to do some form of community, again, community building or relationship building with students. What have you seen on those Friday night uh, sessions? And and, because I think you've had students even running the streams and things like that, correct? They have helped, like helped me organize it. I have not had them help me run the streams. Um, I I do have them help moderate my chat and uh, do stuff like that. But and I know you've had to put the smack down on some of them. Yeah, I mean, they're, you know, with all of this comes the anonymity of gaming and also, you know, the fact that I am a female in this space. Um, Mm. You still get the stuff on Twitch um, that you would expect. But, you know, like you were saying, a lot of these students have not come to campus. Um, The freshmen have not set foot on campus and the sophomores this year were only on campus for one semester. So there is just so much disconnect from the community of school and disconnect um, from getting to know each other. You know, there's no passing periods or lunches or anything anymore. So um, luckily with the help of all of you wonderful people, I got a creator code on Fortnite 
And uh, at first I was, I was teaming up with uh, my friend JD Williams, who's in Arizona. And he invited me to invite my students into these Fortnite community game nights where we would run these hundred person um, custom Fortnite matches. And mm -hmm. So we opened it up to my students and like the first week that I did this, it was like, I, I think I had like 70 students sign up, which like what club in general and what club online has 70 students on a Friday night signing in. So it's, it's just been a wonderful way to have kids connect to the school outside of academics, which we all want to do. Right. Yeah. And, and again, we know the data says when you get kids involved in extracurricular activities, two things happen. GPA goes up and attendance increases. And if we can get those two things to happen, graduation rates are going to go up. Uh, yeah. Know. And that's that's again, that's old research data that goes back to when I was in high school that that data came out. Let's let's shift gears just a little bit to away from your classroom environment. And let's start talking to, about your role now as a as a mentor because you're mentoring one of my general managers, uh, Mr. Travis Witt, who, again, an English teacher, much like yourself. And I'm always fascinated with how he's bringing in gaming into um, his curriculum and, and how he wants to shift things around. But as being part of this network, whether it's as, as a fellow or now as the mentor, how has that network uh, helped you in your growth from from where you were, I guess, last year around this time till now? Oh my God. I mean, I the things that NASEF has connected me to, like literally it's like one of those things where you, you're like, wait, I did that? Like that was the, the craziest thing. I have, NASEF has led me to so many opportunities. Um, I remember a year ago or two years ago, I guess, like 2020 is such a blur. I'm like, what year yeah. was what? <laughs> I know, I'm, with you. Yeah. I'm like uh but I remember two years ago I was setting my new year's resolution and one of them was to present at a conference and so this um, would have been nine, 2019 then? 2019 like going into 2000 I know I'm just I, I don't I'm, know. I'm, I'm going what year are we in right now I don't okay. know but um yeah like that was one of my new year's resolutions was I wanted to start presenting at conferences because all this stuff I'm doing in my class, like I wanted to share it with other people. And uh, NASEF, I don't know, I have I think I've presented at like four or five conferences in the last year. And I, I've had my students present with me on panels, which to them is like, you know, they're like, oh my gosh, like look at all these teachers and um, bringing my students into this space to, to, to hear from them, I think has been the most impactful for me and, and for other people who have told me who have watched our, our sessions. So leading me to that has been amazing. I got to stream on the homepage of Twitch. Like, you, you got onto the front yeah, page. We were on I, the I haven't page. even gotten on the front page. I know it was, um, it was for, oh God, I forgot the esports league, but we were, we were doing a, um, a stream with the, it was like a London esports league or something like that. I forgot, but oh, they British esports e British e British e e league. There you go. Yeah. We British were e sports association. Yeah. There we go. Yes. So we were streaming, um, with them. I was co-hosting with them and, and we ended up on the front page of Twitch, which like, Oh my God, we all, we were about to go live and there was like 12,000 people watching or something. And I was like, Ugh! like, it was, just, <laughs> I was like sitting there so awkward. I was like, hi, like so painfully awkward, but um, yeah. Could, it's just could you, could you imagine one of our esports EDU chats having that happen? Like all of a sudden it's just, we go from what, 20, I, to, you know, to 12,000. I, yeah, I, it was still to this day, I'm like, what? Like, how did that happen? So, I mean, being involved in NASEF, it was just something that I stumbled on. Um, and I applied for the fellowship because it was the first year they were doing it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, maybe this will, this will connect me with other people who can help me expand this to something bigger than it is. And because uh, back before NASEF, I was just struggling. We were doing mm -hmm. HSEL. It was so overwhelming. It's kind of like what we were talking about last week on our chat. Like, how do you do this by yourself? And when do you ask for help? 
um, it just got so overwhelming. And I, I should be honest with you. I didn't know what I was doing. I just was like, I know kids want to play this, these games and I know the games, so let's figure it out. Yeah. Um, a lot of teachers feel that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that's how all of us were at some point. Like we know that we need this in our schools and we're just going to try and figure it out, but connecting with NASEF and having NASEF connect me to this bigger network of people and all these opportunities has, you know, grown my club to way more organized and much better than I probably, it could have ever been. So Mm -hmm. yeah, it's been, it's been a crazy two years. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I feel you on that. But again, we just, again, we know how important all of this work is that we're doing just how important it is to keep uh, kids connected and keep them together. And again, your contributions, I know you kind of started off as like, Oh, well, maybe I'll pop in and do this esports EDU chat. Now you're one of the regulars. You're <laughs> a regular co 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 co-host to the whole thing. So it's, it's been funny. And you have your fan club too. I know uh, <laughs> uh, Sam Anton is let's talk about her for just a second. Cause I don't think she gets enough love. Uh, for the work that she does and the connections she makes with people. But I know she's one of your biggest fans. I'm one of her Uh, biggest fans too. I'm one of her biggest fans as well. And those people, if you don't know, if you people don't know who Sam Anton is, she is probably one of the most hardest working people in the scholastic esports scene who is just so below, you know, she's kind of below the radar, right? She's Mm -hmm. that, she's that person, but she gets things done and she, sees things in really interesting per- perspective. So again, if you are a company who is looking to get into this <laughs> space, Sam Anton would be one of those people I would definitely pick on. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, but I know she's been a huge supporter of you. And again, Travis Witt has spoken so highly of you and your support for him. And I think it's important for other educators, especially with similar backgrounds. Like I said, you and Travis are both English teachers and not just like you're basic. I mean, you're, ta- you're well, he does the senior level English stuff. Mm-hmm we need that level of intellectual. I think it's a lot of things. A lot of the companies like an HS, like you said, HSCL, you were kind of struggling. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's one thing to do a league. It's another thing to have somebody who is a teacher like you, who you connect with and can, and can say like, Hey, not only am I struggling with this, but then I've got all oh, my English class going on. Right. And it's, you know, You're are those, things, essays. <laughs> yeah. you, those things got have to be important. Right. Yeah. I mean, those types of connections. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. And I think that's another reason why I appreciate everything with NASEF so much is, is everyone that it's connected me to Jarrell, Sam, Kevin, like everybody up in NASEF have become people that I truly like, they are my friends. Like I talk Mm -hmm. to them almost every day for the last year. And then it's also connected me to these other educators like Travis Um, And so many other people who you can just bounce ideas off of. Like, I think as a teacher, that's like the number one thing you want to be able to do is say, hey, I want to do this in my class. How would you do it? And then, you know, it's it's always going to morph into something amazing when you have more than one person who's experienced in that field figuring it out. And Travis is just he's doing amazing things. I don't think Travis does not need a mentor. Like Travis could mentor me (laughs) probably in some of the things that he's doing. He's just like crushing it. So, and that's also another thing is like seeing Travis, for example, example, pull off that homecoming. I'm like, what? Like, that's something I never would have imagined that would be possible. And and I think it's important too for people, because I'm sure that there are people who are listening to this who go, well, just be part of like a, a discord or just put it up on Twitter. There's something about, again, having that person you can call or that person you can text or that person you can DM to just be like, look, this is what I'm struggling with right now. There's a, It's so much different than just saying something into a very crowded room of people to say, I need help with this and getting a million responses. Yeah. It's important for people to know who you are, know what your struggles are, develop again those relationships. You and I are two people we have never met. We yeah. have never physically met. And yet it, in since COVID, we have developed this very interesting bond again with our esports edu people because even though we are all over the place most of us haven't met yet we have this really tight interesting network of people now that go across the country and we all can just ping whatever we need to off of each other and it's so weird like i I, that trips me out every week i'm like i cannot believe that i have never met 
anyone in person, like I'm going to cry when we meet one day. It's, it's going to be crazy. It's just, yeah. But uh, any sports EDU house, remember we talked about this for an ISTE conference. We're just going to have one. It's going to be like, for those of you who are listening, if you want a good sponsorship <laughs> thing, we want to get a house together of people of like-minded educators and have, you can have us come in and uh, do it like a, like a real world with uh, educators. Not a real world. <laughs> yeah, we could have a real world. Who's getting kicked out though? Uh, probably me. <laughs> I was going to say Bradford. He was going to get too spicy one night. And Bradford we just got that might out. get too spicy and get kicked out, but yeah. <laughs> It's and, and you know, in ways I am, I, I hate to say this, but like in ways I try and think about the things that I'm thankful for in 2020. And while 2020 was obviously an awful year, I never would have joined the esports EDU streams had school not been shut down and had all of, you know, life been flipped upside down. Before COVID, I was running my gaming club on Thursday afternoons. And I remember I would like try and log in on the Twitter chat, but I would miss it because I was, you know, I had 90 kids in this room that I was dealing with. So I don't know, like I'm, I'm thankful for the, the life upending a little bit because it's brought so many other opportunities that I never, I never would have no one were possible had that not all happened. And, and I think too, what, what it's made us do, and it, there's a, there's something that popped in on the LinkedIn about non-certified personnel play you know, role in all this. I think again, as we are coming out of COVID, there's going to be so much, again, we've developed these really interesting new tight networks, mm-hmm. people from across countries. And there's still going to be some heavy lifting as far as reaching out to the community, getting resources that we need to make things possible because you know, we've relied on gaming and as a way to connect kids together. And I think gaming is going to become so much more important, not just for kids going forward, even though we're going to still want to get outside and do all these other things. But I think there's going to be all these other educators now who have seen the benefits of gaming and want to bring more experiences into school. And we need, you know, companies like Riot to just like loosen up. Yeah. We, we need, you know, Blizzard, loosen up. Yeah. Yeah. Let us as educators use your tools and you, like what, you know, what Fort, what you've done with Fortnite, mm-hmm. the creator codes, to be able to use that sandbox to, among us to be able to take that game and you know change all the rules and i i do yeah. love i think i i posted how our kids decided you know what we were, we're just going to say who the imposter is and we're going to turn it into a game yeah. of like hide and go seek which yeah. is hilarious yeah oh, it was so and i it was the most fun i had playing among us the other day with a bunch of third fourth fifth yeah. sixth, seventh graders oh because everyone's screaming it's just chaos but that was see yeah. that was the problem that we had is that these kids were coming in they were getting so excited and we had to keep muting them. Yeah, yeah. But they were so excited. It's like, you know, let's just take this energy. And the kids said, let's just take their art. We want to be able to talk. We want to be able to chat. And right. as you were saying, have the cameras on. Mm-hmm. And just, you know, I hope that as we get back to whatever the new normal is, is that we don't lose a lot of what we've gained right now in all this. 100%. And I think, you know, like you said, so many people are realizing the community building opportunities with gaming Um, because they're seeing it in their kids at home. Their Mm -hmm. kids are locked up. They can't go outside. They can't hang out with their friends, but guess what? They're on video games talking to their friends and that's their only social interaction. So I think for a lot of people who thought gaming was a waste of time, they're now going to come back into this and say like, Hey, this actually like my kid stayed connected with school and with his friends um through gaming and like you're right like how can we support that how can we bring you know these games into our classroom to build community because yes like we can play among us hide and seek and like while i'm not teaching cea claim evidence analysis guess what playing among us 10 minutes with my class is going to bring them closer together and make them way more comfortable to talk to each other for the rest of the school year so those 10 minutes are going to pay back tenfold. Um, and that's with any, I mean, any game. I'm uh, My next move is bringing Jackbox. I told you guys last week, uh, bringing Jackbox into my classroom, which, you know, is a hilarious. Especially now that they have moderator tools. 
Oh, thank gosh for that. I'm so excited. <laughs> you know, I actually tried it with my gaming club last week. I tried the game I was telling you guys about where you have to give a speech on a random topic and someone else is controlling it for you. I was literally in tears. Like I was crying. We were laughing so hard. And each Oh, time, good. It wasn't just like misery. It no, was it was tears so of joy. Funny. It was just so funny and it was appropriate, you know, which I was scared about, but and the, the beauty of it, which, again, I didn't even think of coming into it, is every single person got the floor for a minute. Like, we all, you, each kid gave their speech, and the speech was silly, and it was funny, but, you know, we were all laughing. Like, each person got that, like, social attention for a part of our club, which sometimes, you know, naturally, especially in Discord uh, voice chats, when you have, like, more than eight, seven, maybe five people in a voice chat it gets real crazy sure and everybody's trying to talk over each other but like playing that jackbox game like everybody got got their spotlight for a second and it was it was just cool like hearing everyone so i'm like can't wait to do that in my class that that's fantastic and and i think that's a i think that's a great way to to uh wrap uh on this interview because it, it gives me hope again for <laughs> Uh, as again, as we're coming out of things that we are going to take what we've learned and and incorporate those further into our class. Uh, Angelique, outside of uh, Thursday night, e the eSports EDU chats, uh, how else can people connect with you? Are you doing regular streaming? I know, again, it's, it, share, please, how people can get in touch with you. If they need to. Twitter, for sure. Um, at Miss Giannis is my Twitter handle. That's where I am, like 98% of the day. Uh, I love Not Twitter. on LinkedIn enough. I'm not on LinkedIn enough, but I need to work on it. I just I haven't gone under the LinkedIn bandwagon. I logged in the other day, and there was a bunch of drama, and I was like, I kind of feel like I'm on Facebook. I don't know. It was weird. Oh, I hope not. Um, but... I am on LinkedIn. I'm just not as active there for sure, except for our streams. And I do stream on my Twitch channel, which is also at Miss Giannis. Um, most of the time it's our community game nights, but I'm there. I'm interacting with chat. Um, it's for the students, but usually I just let anybody join um, at a certain point if we need, if we need more people. So definitely, definitely Twitter, Twitch are the best places to get to me for sure. Perfect. Angelique Giannis, thank you so much for being a guest on the Academy of Esports podcast today. Thanks for having me. That will do it for this week on the Academy of Esports. I've been your host, James O'Hagan. Esports are organized competitive video games allowing schools to redefine their athletic culture, diversify opportunities for student participation, promote good physical and mental health, increase collegiate scholarship pathways, and play games. We can never forget the importance of play. The mission of the Academy of Esports is to support these ideals. The vision of the Academy of Esports is for all students to experience the fun and joy of playing competitive video games. You may follow me on Twitter at Jim O'Hagan. That's at J-I-M-O-H-A-G-A-N and through the Academy of Esports account at T-A-O Esports. It's a great way to get the latest blog posts podcast episodes and news coming out of esports and education and remember you can continue your engagement by going to www.taoesports.com you can also connect through facebook at www.facebook.com slash tao esports thanks again for listening and i look forward to our time again next week